This video brought to you by jadedpainting.com. If you need your miniatures painted to a tabletop standard, check out jadedpainting.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to the second half of this painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay and I'll be showing you how I finished painting this Nurgle themed Chaos Space Marine Sorcerer from the new Chaos Space Marine Codex. I continued on all the metallic areas, specifically the silver metallics, with a one to one mix of non oil and Agrex Earth Shade. This shading will get in all the recesses and give a really worn, dirty appearance. If you don't want your metallics appearing as dirty as this, I recommend just giving it a non oil shading as opposed to a one to one mix of Agrax Earth Shade and non oil. Also, this shade will really dull all the metallic areas, and since it's Nurgle and you really want it to be really worn out, dirty metallics, I recommend this combination of shading. With the shading, I recommend just taking your time and making sure you get a nice even coverage over all the areas. If after a single shading you're unhappy with the depth of color, feel free to do a second one. Just make sure that the first one is completely dry before proceeding to the second shading. Also, just to tell you, if you do two shades of this combination, it will appear very, very dark and dirty. And luckily this step didn't take me very long, seeing as shading always takes much less time than the base coats. When the shade was dry, I gave a very, very light dry brush over these areas with Iron Breaker, the first layer color associated with Lead Belcher. The key is just to focus on the edges and slightly the, re the raised areas, so that way you can give a little bit of a shine and produce some contrast on the metal. You can leave it if you want, just its flat, dirty appearance, which would also look good as Nurgle. I just wanted to give a little contrast on these metallic areas. As you can see, I'm basically just using overbrush or dry brush technique depending on the areas, just focusing on the raised parts and the edges. Next, to give it a rusted appearance, I decided to use a stippling technique and I put Evil Sun Scarlet on a specific stippling brush and then just stippled it all over these metallic areas to give it a nice reddish rusted appearance. When doing the rust, make sure not to do an even coverage. You want to just do random patterns because rust does not build up evenly on a sword or any other metallic area for that matter. This step took a little bit of time because I just want to make sure that I had a nice rust pattern over each part before proceeding to the next one. And I repeated this process on the face, the symbols, and basically all over the metallic areas, including the chains and anywhere that I painted silver. And next, I started on all the bones on the model with Ushabti Bone, a perfectly named color when you're painting bone colors. Ushabti Bone is a particularly thin paint, so I recommend doing two very thin layers of it, um, especially after the first coat. The first coat didn't go completely perfectly over the dark colors, so I had to do a second coat. And I also decided to paint the pages in the book and the sword handle with Ushabti Bone, giving the sword handle a bone appearance. When the base coat was done, I gave a watered down Agrax Earth Shade to all these areas, just to get in the recesses and to give some depth to all the bone areas. I always recommend Agrax Earth Shade as the shading when painting bones. And then I highlighted them back up once again with a one-to-one -one mix of Ushabti Bone 
and white scars just to focus on the raised areas and to bring out the nice edge detail on these parts. When the bone parts were finished, I started on the yellows, which included the eyes and the centers of the symbols on the chest and the helmet, with Hourland Sunset, a really nice dark yellow which gives actually very nice coverage over pretty much any color very quickly. I then shaded these areas with Seraphim Sepia, and while they were drying, I painted the symbol on his left shoulder pad, Ushabti Bone. I wanted to give it a nice off-color, sorry, off-white color appearance before doing some washes to give it some really nice Nurgleish colors. And as with the previous steps, make sure to get nice even coverage before proceeding forward. And then I gave it a Karaberg Crimson shading. So first it'll dye it a little bit red, and then next I want to go over that red shading with a green shade, and then combined, the red and the green will give it a really nice Nurgle rotting appearance for the symbol. And then I gave an Agrax Earthshade to the horn parts of the symbol on the shoulder. And that's it. You now know how I painted up this Chaos Space Marine Sorcerer, specifically in a Nurgle scheme. Overall, I think it turned out really nicely. I really love the Nurgle appearance on them. I love painting Nurgle themes myself. And I think he'll look amazing on the tabletop. As you can see, I just went with a dark colored painted sand for the base just to give some contrast and some nurgle appearance. I also gave it an Athonian camo shade shading. Well, I really hope you liked this video. Please leave comments in the comment section down below. Please like the video, favorite the video if you will, and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. It really does help a lot. So thank you very much as always for watching this video. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.